Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Data Science One. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, probability distributions, uh, especially over random variables. Uh, so to to pick up where we left off last time, we were talking about uh, obtaining data, uh, especially with samples. Um, so just to, to motivate where we're going today, um, looking at uh, samples of a population, uh, we're going to have some uh, some process of collecting uh, uh, sample data. Um, and and we, we ended last time saying that uh, simple random samples were one of the, the best ways to uh, collect unbiased data. Now there's a, a few caveats that, that we'll go into, and uh, especially uh, that'll motivate uh, the, the topic for today. Um, so uh, quickly, I, I should note uh, that I forgot last time uh, to explicitly mention that uh, the simple random sampling, um, while uh, you need a, a large set of your data in the population to be able to sample from, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, exhaustive. Uh, usually a simple random sample will work well if you just have a, a large uh, amount of your population available to sample, um, hopefully a large unbiased uh, uh, subset, but but that's uh, easier said than done. So uh, simple random sampling um, is is drawing uh, samples uniformly without replacement, which is to say that uh, we selected a, a subset of of those gray dots before and and picked uh, a few of them. Um, but uh, this isn't exactly uh, what we tend to talk about with random sampling. Um, where uh, the, the simpler random sampling approaches use replacement, uh, meaning that you draw from the same distribution every time. Now, it's unlikely that you're, if you're out surveying someone or out surveying a population that you'd survey the, the same in particular individual multiple times, uh, but that can happen with a, with a, a random sample um, using a traditional random variable. Uh, this uh, this isn't uh, exactly uh, the same as a simple random sample, but for uh, the, the cases of this class and for the cases of most data science projects in general, uh, we'll make the assumption that our population is large enough that uh, sampling with replacement uh, is, is equivalent to um, our simple random sample without replacement. Uh, mostly just because this uh, this makes all of the math that we're going to get into a lot easier because we don't have to account for how our uh, how our pool that we sample from changes each time that we pull out uh, a sample. Um, if we're allowed to pull that one out again, then uh, of course the the uh, distribution can remain the same throughout repeated trials. Uh, so just a, a small caveat, but uh, but good to be upfront with. So uh, if we're pulling random variables from a, a population into a, a sample distribution, uh, what this sample distribution is, is a, a sample of random variables or uh, a numerical random sample. Um, the way that we'll denote uh, these random variables is with uh, the with uh, uppercase letters. Um, for example, X and Y, we'll also use uh, the letters A and B um, to represent our canonical distributions, uh, as is common in uh, many branches of, of statistics. Um, we're, we're going to get into uh, a lot of uh, math and details of probability and distributions um, in, in this lecture. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it'll be uh, a little bit tedious, uh, but, but these are all important preliminaries to have um, for understanding uh, the implications that, that happen as we do sample collection, as we'll touch on at the very end of this lecture, uh, but also as, as we move into uh, model building. Um, the, uh, the assumptions that we have uh, about our random variables uh, turn out to be really important, uh, and, and we'll revisit that later on in, some, in the semester. So uh, today we'll be doing lots of uh, terminology and notation um, introduction, or hopefully for many of you uh, who have seen some of this stuff before, uh, it'll just be a refresher. Um, folks noted that uh, a refresher would be helpful uh, in general here, um, but uh, I'm going to go fairly fast through uh, a lot of material um, 
given that, that hopefully most of this you've all uh, been exposed to at one point before and, and we're just bringing it to the top of your mind. Um, but if it's the case that uh, that there's something uh, here that's not clear, uh, feel free to uh, to use that to, to um, guide the uh, the in class discussion topics too. So as I mentioned before, we're going to use capital letters uh, like capital X here for the uh, variables and their values. Uh, we'll use the the lowercase um, the lowercase uh, letter for. So for example, uh, if we want to ask when the variable uppercase X uh, equals 20, um, then, uh, then the lowercase x is, is a particular instance of what that variable could be. Uh, and we could ask for the probability that that happens. Uh, we should note that uh, since we're dealing with probability distributions, uh, these distributions all have to add up to 100%, uh, or for our case, we'll, we'll be using proportions, so they have to add up to 1. Uh, over the, the likelihoods of all uh, possible values of a single variable. Uh, we mostly will use uh, those um, discrete variables where we're looking at a single value, um, but uh, it, it certainly is the case, um, and we'll, we'll see later in the semester uh, in, in some of those examples uh, that continuous variables follow uh, very much the, the same set of rules. Uh, we'll mostly just be talking about uh, discrete variables today for simplicity of notation. Um, but, uh, but when we're dealing with uh, continuous variables, uh, pretty much everything stays the same, except, uh, of course, we have to define ranges for what we think uh, these variables should be or, or what ranges of interest that we have. Uh, we'll also uh, largely be talking about uh, single variables um, with, with just the notation um, P of capital X equals X, or for simplicity, P, just P of X. Um, but uh, later in the, the lecture, um, we'll touch on joint distributions, which is to say uh, the probability of having uh, values, specific values of multiple variables. So for example here, uh, that X has a certain value, lowercase x, and that Y has a certain value, lowercase y. Um, this uh, many of the things again that we'll talk about in the the simpler case extend to joint distributions, uh, but there's also some some interesting properties that that we'll touch on for these in particular. So to to get a little bit more concrete here uh, with a uh, random variable um, and its possible values, let's uh, consider the the variable x um, that might have values uh, three, four, six, and eight. Um, these are the values of x, and in the uh, probability distribution, um, p of x uh, is, as you see, the values between 0 and 1, adding up to 1, uh, that say how likely it is for each value of x to occur. Um, note, note that we can, uh, just like the continuous variables, uh, define ranges here that, that include more than one of these uh, discrete outcomes. While uh, we can visualize uh, these probabilities in a number of ways, uh, one of the ways that, uh, that is most intuitive to visualize, and, and we'll get in, uh, in a few lectures into uh, some strategies behind visualization and, and making them intuitive, um, but, uh, but a particularly helpful uh, visualization here are, are histograms. Um, or, uh, or um, probability distributions. So uh, by showing areas of each of these, um, of, of each of these variables, um, we're uh, implying visually um, just how much uh, space or mass um, each of these variables holds, which is to say how likely it is to be selected. Um, this is a, a scheme that we'll come back to quite a bit for mapping uh, these probability distributions. Um, and, and just to uh, reiterate again that, that all this applies to both the uh, discrete and continuous, um, we'll, uh, we'll have our discrete variables um, being plotted discreetly, um, and of course our continuous variables being, uh, being continuous functions. Uh, but uh, but the, the same concepts uh, apply to both.
Uh, there are uh, a number of common distributions that, that we should be uh, aware of, uh, at least by name. Uh, most of the underlying uh, intuition and math are, are shared between each of these. Uh, so for the sake of time today, uh, I, I won't go too deep into uh, examples for, for all of the, uh, all of the, the corollaries that, that we'll talk about later for each of these uh, distributions, um, but, but we'll talk uh, really briefly about some of the, the common ones. So uh, one of the, the very common um, discrete uh, distributions is the Bernoulli distribution, uh, which is uh, the chance that a, a single event will be true or false. Uh, so the, the classic example here is you flip a coin, um, you, you get uh, an answer of one if it's heads or zero if it's tails, um, and you want to know what the chance of, um, of having a heads is for that flip. A uh, generalization of the uh, Bernoulli distribution is the binomial distribution, uh, which considers uh, multiple instances of that uh, binary trial. Um, so for example, instead of flipping a, a coin once, we could flip that coin 10 times um, and ask how many heads and how many tails uh, we, we get uh, in that collective process. Um, this means that, uh, that we have uh, not just the probabilities of uh, how likely uh, a heads or tails is to come up um, on a, a given uh, flip, um, but we also have uh, there we go. We, we also have uh, the, the sequences of um, of what orders heads or tails can can appear in this um, in this list. Uh, so if we think of uh, the example of having six heads, uh, if there are uh, 10 different positions in which those six heads can occur, uh, we have to uh, also factor in the, the, the permutations um, of, of that list, uh, which is to say we have a, a, a 10 choose six um, examples. Uh, so slightly more generally, uh, the number of, or, or the probability of uh, an outcome um, in our Bernoulli, or in our, sorry, in our binomial distribution uh, is the, the combinatorics, or, or sorry, the, the permutations um, times the, the likelihood of, um, of that many events happening for our true and our false outcomes. This, uh, this function uh, we'll call our probability mass function, which we actually uh, already saw uh, visualized um, in the, the discrete outcomes um, in, in the previous slides. Um, and uh, just to, to be consistent across continuous and discrete variables, we also have the continuous version of this, um, uh, or, or at least uh, the analogous function in, in uh, real space. Uh, which we call the probability density function, or PDF. Um, well, uh, you, you'll hear these terms mentioned quite a bit. So uh, one of the, the things that we might care the most about um, when sampling is our expectation, um, which is to say, uh, from our samples, uh, what do we expect our population uh, average to be? Um, the, the, this, the simplest way to think about this is to ask um, what each of the outcomes can be and what their likelihood is, uh, which is to say the, the value x uh, times the probability that that variable has that value x uh, and, and to sum it over all possible values of x. Um, so for example, in the uh, Bernoulli distribution, uh, if we have uh, a value of zero for tails that happens 50% of the time, uh, and a value one for heads that happens 50% of the time, uh, 0.5 times zero plus 0.5 times one is 0.5, which is to say we have a, an expected value of, uh, of 0.5, or, or half the time heads or tails uh, from, a, uh, from an unbiased coin flip. Uh, another way that we can think about this, uh, which uh, is maybe slightly less intuitive, uh, uh, but we'll rely on for 
uh, motivating the, the sampling here is you can also think of uh, your probability distributions for a sample um, and, and accumulating those uh, over all samples to eventually get to your population uh, expectation. Um, we, uh, we, we won't visit this so much, um, so, so not to worry if this is a little unclear, uh, but it motivates uh, how and why uh, sampling is good for approximating our population expectation. Uh, the expectation itself uh, is, is just a, a number. Uh, it's a value, not a variable. Um, that's uh, good to keep clear that we're actually getting a, an answer from our expectation. Um, and uh, again, it's uh, similar to uh, our, our average, what we might expect on average um, to say. Uh, it has the, the same units as the random variable, um, which, which makes sense, um, but, but units will, uh, will play in uh, a little bit more um, later in the lecture. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't need to be a possible value of our random variable, and I'll show you an example of that in a second with the, the roll of the die. Um, and in, intuitively, it's the, the center of our probability histogram. Um, which is to say the, the, the center of mass um, or the, the middle, uh, which, uh, which is analogous to the, the average um, or the, the mean or the median, depending on, on your distribution um, of, uh, of that probability mass function or probability density function. Um, the uh, the maybe most intuitive and, and most helpful uh, definition here is just that the expectation um, is the, the long-term average we might expect if we were to, to simulate uh, that variable multiple times, which is to say take many draws from our population distribution, uh, which hopefully is, is what we are uh, planning to do. Uh, so the uh, an example here um, that we that we looked at before, um, if we want to uh, consider the expectation for this probability um, probability uh, distribution, uh, again we can take the values uh, of each uh, instance of our variable and multiply them by their probability to end up with um, with our expectation. Uh, which here happens to be uh, the, the average, uh, which is to say the mean uh, in this case. Uh, and note that, uh, that the mean here is not one of the, um, not one of the variables uh, that, or not one of the values that we have for our variable. Um, and, and that's something that, uh, that is often the case. Uh, it's, uh, it's, helpful um, to not just be able to uh, find these expectations um, analytically, uh, but, but also just to, to be able to look at distributions and, and see that uh, your expectations make sense. Um, so, uh, so many times this, this is simple to uh, approximate. Um, if, uh, if you have a, a, a telescoping uh, series, um, like in the first example, uh, it, it's uh, again the the average or or mean um, of that series. Um, if you have a uniform distribution uh, between zero and one, uh, it's it's good to know that the um, the expectation is 0.5. Uh, similarly, a uniform distribution between negative one and one, uh, which which we'll come back to uh, in, in a little bit here, uh, has an expectation of zero. Um, and uh, to look at an example of a, a continuous function, um, or I guess another example of a continuous function, the normal distribution or, or bell curve um, is one that, uh, that will come uh, to visit quite commonly, um, has an expectation at the mean of, um, of that curve, or at the, the center of that curve. There are many things that we can do to random variables, uh, and we'll uh, touch on those quickly. Uh, so for example, uh, we can do a linear transformation to a random variable. This is, is something that we'll actually do quite a bit. 
um, and uh, we can uh, ask how this transformation affects our expectation uh, as well as as other features of our distribution. Um, we'll uh, we'll say that the uh, expectation of our transformation uh, is uh, where our transformation is is scaling and shifting. Um, is uh, the scaled and shifted expectation of our individual variable. Um, note here that, uh, that we don't need the expectation on uh, the, the constant shift value here um, because the expectation of a constant is that constant. Um, we, we don't have any, any sampling or variation um, that we need to take the expectation over. Uh, this is uh, helpful to know um, because uh, there are many times when we will need to uh, do linear transformations um, in our feature engineering um, or, or as part of our processing pipelines. Um, another relationship between expectation is additivity. Um, which is to say that the expectation of a sum of two variables is the sum of the expectations. Um, this one is, is pretty straightforward, uh, but, but will get uh, used in a, a couple of our later definitions. Um, and and uh, this makes sense, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll show some, uh, some interesting results uh, when we look at sums of random variables uh, as, as well later on in the lecture. Uh, so variance uh, is, is the other main thing that we often uh, think about with, a, um, with a, a distribution of a random variable, um, where variance is the square deviation from the expectation. Uh, which is uh, to say how much you uh, expect the sample to differ from uh, the sample or population expectation. Uh, we uh, square this um, both to, uh, to keep values positive, uh, so all, all variance um, values will be uh, greater than or equal to zero. Um, and the, uh, the squaring has some other nice properties that you might remember from your statistics classes. Uh, for example, uh, more heavily weighting um, larger, larger variances or, or larger uh, differences from the expectation. Now, the units of the, the variance um, are the square of the unit that, uh, that we're dealing with, uh, which can be a, a little tricky to deal with um, and, and especially to intuit. Uh, so the version of variance that we most often uh, use and talk about is the standard deviation, which is uh, simply the square root of the variance um, because this has the, uh, the, the same um, the same units as our expectation uh, and as our uh, random variable. So the, the variance, uh, if we were to say um, this is how far away um, from our expectation we expect a sample to be by chance, um, there are some interesting properties um, that, uh, that, that come about because of this. Um, so, uh, so one, um, which is uh, Chebyshev's inequality uh, to, uh, to give the uh, terrible English pronunciation of, uh, of the Russian name here, um, is, uh, is to say that uh, as we, um, uh, that, that uh, as we look farther and farther away from our distribution, uh, which is to say uh, the, the more and more standard deviations away from our expectation, uh, the probability that a, uh, a data point lies uh, that far away uh, shrinks um, with, uh, with one over uh, the number of standard deviations that we uh, move away from squared. Um, so uh, you don't need to, to necessarily remember this formula exactly. They'll, they'll be in a, a, a simpler version, um, looking at the standard deviation specifically in a second. Um, but just to, to recall uh, that uh, 
that the 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 mass of our distribution uh, will be centered um, within the, the the first few um, first few standard deviations from our expectation. Uh, and, and specifically, uh, if we think about some common distributions like the normal distribution, um, there, there are specific rules about just, uh, uh, just uh, what probability um, values will be uh, certain standard deviations away from our, um, from our expectation, um, uh, the, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Um, for uh, the mass of the distribution that is one, two, or three standard deviations away, respectively. Um, ho hopefully you all remember this. Uh, I, I think they, uh, they go over it uh, in uh, pretty good detail in basic statistics. Uh, so now that we, uh, we know that linear transformations are, are something that, that we're going to use a lot um, and we know how to calculate the expectations over them, uh, let's also consider um, how these transformations affect our variance, uh, which will be slightly more complicated. Um, a shift by a, a constant value um, is, is the, the simpler version. Um, so if we consider this distribution uh, x in blue, if we're to shift, we were to shift this by, for example, adding four to it, um, it's uh, it's the the same distribution, um, but but moved uh, further up the axis. Um, so as you can see pictorially, the the variance doesn't change. Uh, however, if we were to uh, multiply this um, this distribution. Uh, so, for example, if we plotted 3x, um, we can see here that, uh, that the variance of our new distribution is three times that of our old distribution. Um, this, uh, th this makes sense uh, and, and is, our, um, is, is, is our, our rule for, uh, for linear transformations of um, of scaling random variables, um, and we'll we'll come back to this uh, in a, in a moment. Um, but uh, but this also relates to the standard deviation um, that that changes by one over the uh, square root of, or sorry, by by the square root of the change in um, in the the distribution, since uh, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Uh, another thing that we uh, often will think about with these linear transformations is standardization. Um, so we, we will likely touch later in the semester when we get to uh, future engineering and especially uh, modeling, uh, why this is advantageous. Um, but uh, but I, I think it, it also intuitively makes sense why we might want to consider um, not just the absolute units, but the uh, the standardized version of random variables, uh, which is to say uh, how far away uh, a variable, uh, a sample is from its expectation relative to the standard deviation. Uh, I, I think that this makes sense because uh, it's, it's hard to tell um, if we're, for example, taking uh, someone's temperature um, and it's not uh, exactly uh, 98.6, if, if it's a temperature of uh, 99, um, we, we might ask, um, you know, just, uh, just how bad is it to, uh, to have a temperature that high? Um, how much can we expect that to occur just by random chance? Um, and by thinking instead of in, uh, in absolute units, uh, if we think of this in standardized units, um, we uh, will uh, essentially be able to um, know from our uh, 68, 99.7 rule, um, or, or more generally from Chebyshev's rule, um, just how unlikely it is uh, that an event that many standard deviations away uh, will occur. Uh, which, which is to say that it takes into account um, how much variation uh, is, uh, is present in, in your sample. Uh, so the, the 
nice property uh, about this as well, um, uh, especially from the, the machine, machine learning side of things is that it centers our uh, expectation around zero um, by subtracting the expectation. Um, sorry, it, it centers the, uh, the sample around zero by subtracting our expectation um, and sets our standard deviation to, to one. Uh, this, uh, this means that our squared expectation, or the expectation of our uh, square, uh, as well as our variance are, are also equal to one, um, but, but this is a, a fact that we will use um, less than the, uh, the, than the one above for uh, expectation and standard deviation of the variable itself. Uh, so uh, I've, I've just thrown a bunch of uh, equations uh, at you. Um, so to recap very quickly, um, the linear transformations um, of random variables can be done uh, to the expectations, um, just as they can be to the actual variables. Um, expectation is additive uh, between sums of variables, um, but uh, transformations that scale uh, variables uh, scale the variance um, with the uh, with the the square of that variable. Um, I actually think that I, I I may have forgotten to mention the square before. Um, so so yes, the uh, they uh, they vary with the the square of the variable. Um, so uh, the, the variance of uh, sums of random variables uh, seems to be the, uh, the, the next step here, which uh, is an interesting one. Um, so uh, in particular, uh, this is a scenario that, that is likely familiar to any of you who, uh, who play uh, board games or, or games with dice in general. Um, that, that let's consider two distributions. Um, Let's consider uh, both of them being rolls of the die, uh, one where your score is twice what you rolled, uh, and one where you roll two different die and, and add the sum and add, add the two values together. Uh, now, both of these uh, distributions have the same expectation. Uh, you're uh, most likely to end up with um, with uh, an expectation of seven, um, since uh, since we have symmetric um, symmetric distributions from two to twelve, uh, but as you can see in the plot here, uh, the spread of these two distributions um, is uh, is very different. Um, that uh, in in one we have. Um, a somewhat uniform distribution on the uh, on the even numbers between two and twelve, uh, where with the roll of two die, uh, we end up uh, with a probability mass function uh, much heavily biased towards the center. Uh, so, so why why is this? Um, the the reason for this is the covariance between the the two variables. Um, which is to say um, that uh, that uh, the in the the case of the same die the same roll twice um, the uh, the relationship between the two rolls uh, matches up uh, exactly so so the variance um, of of our sum. Uh, is is directly related to or indirectly proportional to the variance of our single role, um, where in the case where we have two independent roles, um, there the the variance um, the the spread uh, of each um, in effect cancels part of each other out. Um, so, so this is shown numerically here when we say that the uh, covariance between two variables is uh, the expectation of both of those variables, um, or sorry, the expectation of uh, the, the joint distribution of those two variables minus the expectations of the individual variables. Uh, I, I don't need you to uh, understand the, the math behind this. Um, uh, simply, um, 
that uh, that the variance um, between two variables, uh, the, sorry, the variance of the sum of two variables depends not only on the variance of those individual variables, but also the covariance between them, um, which is, uh, is what's written in the top equation here. Um, now, the, the case of the, um, of the, the two die um, is a, a case where uh, each of the two roles are completely independent, um, which means that, uh, that their, um, the, the covariance between them is zero. Uh, the, the outcome of one does not depend at all on the outcome of the other. Um, where in the case where we rolled the same die uh, and doubled our score, uh, the, the covariance of the, uh, of the roll with itself is a, a perfect one. Uh, they're, they're both uh, exactly the same um, uh, all, all of the time. Um, and so that uh, plugging in either zero or one into the first equation, um, shows you how the, uh, the variance is larger um, in the example of the same die twice than it is uh, in the two independent um, roles. Now, uh, the version of covariance that is, uh, is more useful intuitively and, and probably much more familiar is correlation, um, which is something we'll, we'll talk about much more in modeling um, and, and visualization. Um, so uh, the, the reason this is, uh, is more intuitive is that we take our covariance, um, which has units of both of our distributions, and divide by the standard deviation of each of those distributions. Now this is nice because it gets rid of our units, um, which are often hard to interpret um, when we have multiple units stacked up on top of each other. Um, but uh, but also it was nice because uh, it accounts again for the standard deviation in each of those um, in in each of those distributions, um, so that we have a standardized and unitless correlation, uh, which we call R. Um, For, uh, for uncorrelated random variables, uh, as you might expect from the equation in the last slide, uh, a covariance of zero um, means that there necessarily is a correlation of zero and vice versa. Um, so uh, the, the important note to, to take away from this slide is that uh, the independent random variables are uncorrelated. Um, and uh, and Thinking about how independent each of our features or or uh, or pieces of data are when doing data science um, be becomes very important, um, and and that's something that, that we'll consider explicitly uh, in in future lectures. Uh, that's not to say um, that uh, that all uncorrelated random variables are independent. Um, for example, the, the case here of, um, of x and x squared um, are, are two variables that are not linearly correlated, um, but uh, obviously you can see how they are dependent. Um, so, uh, so typically for, for this correlation, we're, we're talking about linear correlation, um, and, and you, you can extrapolate uh, um, many of the relationships that, uh, that could occur um, between two variables outside of, of simple linear correlation. Uh, talking about variance, uh, if x and y are uh, uncorrelated and, and independent, uh, the variance of the sum of these two distributions is the sum of the variances, um, which is to say that the, uh, the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the variances. Uh, this is a, an equation that comes up uh, quite a bit in practice um, and is a, a good one to remember. Uh, the, uh, the uncorrelated random variables uh, here act like orthogonal vectors, which uh, if, if you don't understand that now, um, no need to worry. Um, but we'll, we'll touch more on this uh, as we get to uh, looking at features and, and more data cleaning as well.
Uh, so I, I want to introduce uh, a few more uh, quick uh, notations and, and terms here, um, one of them being the conditional probability. Uh, so the, the probability of uh, one event A happening given that we know uh, event B has happened. So the, the vertical line here means uh, given that or uh, conditioned on. Um, Usually, uh, this is, is shown in the, the short form without the uh, equal sign and value, um, and, and simply is to say the, the probability of A given B, um, which is, is to imply uh, often a, a certain value of, of B. For uh, independent random variables, um, like we just talked about, uh, the probability of A happening uh, is independent of whether or not B happens. So the, pro the uh, conditional probability of A given B is simply the probability of A. Um, ho hopefully that, uh, that's fairly straightforward. Um, uh, another uh, probability that we, we briefly introduced earlier, um, but, but it's good to revisit, uh, is the, the joint probability, which is the, the probability of um, both of these events happening. Uh, we can think of this, uh, and it's often helpful to think of this in terms of the conditional probability, um, which is to say that, uh, that uh, the probability of uh, A given B uh, times the probability of B. Uh, so to, to uh, unfold, unpack that backwards, if you know that B happened, uh, and then you were to ask how likely A is to happen now that you know B has happened, um, those two multiplied together would give you the probability that B and A happen, um, and, and vice versa. Um, we can flip that around to, to say that we sample A first um, and then look at the conditional probability of, of B given A, uh, and that those will be equivalent. Um, in our case of independence, uh, this, uh, this nicely simplifies uh, to simply the probability of A times the probability of B. Um, this is uh, our, our, uh, our, our simple independent um, joint probabilities. Uh, if we are to do just the tiniest bit of algebra and, and rearrange this equation, um, we end up with Bayes' rule, um, which uh, again, if you're not familiar with, with Bayesian statistics um, or, or Bayes' rule or Bayes' theorem, um, Feel free to, uh, to, to not dwell on this, uh, but uh, we'll, depending on time in the semester, uh, perhaps revisit this in, in great detail, uh, or, or perhaps not so much, um, but uh, is a, a very foundational, um, foundational rule for uh, updating models, uh, especially um, for, for updating models of beliefs of uh, your inference on a population given the additional information from, from new samples. Um, so this, this turns out to be uh, actually a really important rule for uh, modeling and, and machine learning. Uh, one, one more uh, term that, uh, that I'll throw into the mix here. Um, I, I know that uh, I'm, I'm, we're packing a lot in, uh, but, uh, but again, feel free to, uh, to, to let us know um, in the, the joint session, uh, the, the live session, um, if, uh, if any of these terms are unfamiliar. Um, but the, the, the one that we'll add here is marginalization, um, which is uh, to say that uh, what we might often have uh, is a joint probability table. Um, and if we are looking for uh, the probability of just a, a single variable, uh, we can marginal. We can look at the margins, which is to say, uh, sum over all of the instances of of the other variable that that you don't care about. Um, this uh, I think makes the the most sense uh, visually, um, just to say that uh, the probability um, to be to be loose with our a's and b's versus x's and y's that the probability of uh, for example y one is the sum of y one with x one with a, plus y1 with x2, uh, and so forth uh, across all possible values of, of x, um, and, and vice versa for the margins uh, along the bottom too. Uh, 
Uh, again, hopefully, uh, hopefully quite intuitive, but uh, marginal probabilities are are something uh, that uh, again we'll, we'll use quite a bit in practice. Uh, we to uh, get get close to wrapping things up. Uh, let's uh, talk about um, talk about sample means. Um, so uh, so. To, to bring back uh, the topic here to last lecture about uh, about sampling and, and simple random samples um, if we think about uh, some IID sample which means uh, uh, independent and identically distributed samples or uh, just to say random uh, independent draws from the same distribution um, each one has uh, some mean and standard deviation um, and the sample mean uh, will be uh, the average mean of our samples, um, which is to say uh, 1 over n times the sum of those samples where n is the number. Um, and as we saw before on our rules about uh, linear transformations on variance, um, we scale by the um, by the uh, by the the variance scales with the uh, with the um, the change with the uh, multiplicative factor on the distribution. Um, so as the the uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance, uh, the standard deviation uh, varies with the square of uh, the sample size. Um, so uh, again, hopefully this is uh, this is something um, that that you've learned in uh, basic statistics. Um, I, th I think actually now that I see that there there may have been uh, an error on on the prior slide um, about the the square of the variance, uh, but uh, I'm I'm quite positive this this slide is finally correct, um, where the standard deviation. Uh, does vary by the square root of the sample size, um, and and this is in fact the uh, the most useful um, version of, um, of of that statement. So to to tie this into uh, your your readings, um, if we if we think about uh, an example where we have um, lots of uh, lots of uh, a, a population with lots of individuals, what we might uh, often do is go out and collect a, a single sample that's as large as we possibly can. Um, but uh, that, uh, that large sample is uh, one draw from a distribution, um, from, from the, the variance of samples of that size. Um, and uh, as, as you saw in your reading in the example of, uh, of uh, voter sampling, um, we also uh, could sample many small, um, many smaller samples uh, and look at the average statistics, or to say the expectation uh, over all of those samples. Um, and in general, uh, as, as you saw in the reading, uh, the expectation of our sample uh, tends to be less biased than a single draw from our, our large sample. Um, and there's, there's two things uh, at play here. Um, the, the first is the, the square root law, um, which, which we just talked about saying how um, the, the standard deviation of the uh, of our sample distribution shrinks as that sample size gets larger and larger. Um, and, and also uh, the, the central limit theorem, uh, which states that uh, as you draw from a, um, from a population uh, with multiple samples, uh, the, the, the distribution of your samples uh, the, the, the expectation of those samples will be roughly normally distributed, um, which is uh, important not just because normal distributions are nice, but also because they're centered at your population mean. Um, and, uh, and 
in conjunction with the law of large numbers uh, that says that as a sample size grows, its mean gets closer to the average of the population. Um, it suggests that uh, that uh, taking more and more samples um, will get you closer and closer to the population mean. So to show an example of this uh, pictorially, um, here's a, a, a simulation of drawing uh, many independent samples uh, from our uh, from our. Uh, our, our true population up, up top. Um, on the left are uh, smaller samples, and on the right are, are larger samples. Um, they, they both tend to be centered at our population mean, uh, as, uh, as long as we have a, a reasonable number of samples. Um, they, uh, as you can see, the, the smaller sample has a, a, wider, uh, a wider standard deviation and variance. Um, but but the larger sample also has some um, some variance um, from from the expectation. Uh, so that's to say, uh, again, bringing it back home, that if you were to take uh, just one um, one very large sample from the distribution on the right, uh, maybe twenty five isn't isn't very large, but uh, use your imagination here. Um, that that if we were to take uh, one instance of a large sample. Um, it uh, may be close to the population mean, but, but certainly is not guaranteed to be uh, right at that expectation. In fact, we expect some variance. Uh, where if we were to take many smaller samples, um, the, uh, the expectation of that distribution of samples um, is expected to be uh, very close to our, our actual population mean, even if the, uh, the red bar in the, uh, the middle left uh, subfigure uh, does swing quite a bit from uh, from sample to sample um, by by summing over them and, and taking the expectation. Uh, we uh, just like rolling the dice multiple times um, re reduce the uh, the um, the variation in our expectation. So uh, this is a uh, one way we get to these uh, these unbiased uh, samples of um, of our population. So to, uh, to sum things up, I, I know this has been a, a long lecture uh, where I've, I've thrown a, a lot of information at you. Um, please feel free to, to reach out with, uh, with questions um, and, uh, and, and uh, talk about um, the, the parts of this that, that were new to you. Um, and, and I can help to, uh, to uh, both explain concepts and, and to stress you know, which parts uh, of this are, are more important than others. Um, but, uh, but to sum up, uh, we talked a lot about random variables today uh, because uh, we said we were going to be taking random draws from our population um, while we're sampling. Um, the, the thing that we uh, really care about uh, for inference on our population from samples is typically the expectation of these random variables. Uh, so we, we talked a lot about uh, what those expectations are and how they can vary uh, as we think about combining samples or permuting and transforming those samples. Um, if we have some uh, amount of uh, deviation uh, in those samples, uh, we need to consider variance as one of the, the main tools that we'll, we'll use to compare uh, across samples um, and, and make inferences from our samples back to our population variables. Um, and uh, and, and the, the sums and, and means across these uh, in particular um, will, uh, will, will play a role as we get into model building. Uh, so to uh, just wrap up, uh, we'll be uh, going from here to a intro, um, hopefully another review. Um, apologies for, for all of the reviews, but it's important that we're all on the same page here before we, uh, we really start to dig into to hands-on stuff um, where, where everyone's going to have to be a, a little bit more independent. Um, but we'll do a, a, a intro and review of programming in Python. Um, and then we'll uh, start to dig into some uh, data science specific Python packages 
uh, for dealing with uh, the type of, of tabular data um, and, and also random variables um, that we've been talking about, uh, particularly the, the pandas package. Um, this will, will lead us into uh, some of the, the more practical and hands-on uh, data science, uh, things like exploratory data analysis, uh, cleaning and, and visualization, um, and, and that'll set us up uh, really nicely to, to move into modeling um, and, and into uh, hands-on projects as well. Um, so I'm uh, excited uh, for, for that to come and uh, appreciate you sticking through me in, uh, in what was a pretty dense uh, lecture today. Um, thanks, and I'll uh, see you online.